Hello and welcome to this Unreal micro lesson on how to set up an imposter. Uh, now this is an awesome trick for, for optimization and a tool which you don't see much about. But basically what this will allow you to do is this will allow you to create a, a billboard-esque um, model uh, which functions as a flat plane but dependent on the angle which you look at the model it is going to it is going to give you a different image so that you're going to to be able to see so it's going to look like it's 3d um, now this is used in uh, this is used for optimization usually of very very far off objects but I will quickly go through and show you what it's working like so in order to demonstrate this, I am going to use the rock, which comes with the starter content. Now, so I just search for rock and I've just dragged in the static mesh. OK, so in this rock, now you're going to see if I was to turn to brush fry main, we've got a fair few vertices here. OK, now we could, it's not a huge amount, but, but it's good enough for demonstration methods. OK, now, um, if I wanted to create a uh, uh, an imposter for this, this is how I'd go about it. Okay, the first thing is you need to go to the plugin section, and we need to search for imposter imposter baker, and this is the tool we'll use to create it. If you click enable, it'll ask you to restart, and then you'll have it. Okay, so you'd click that to enable, restart. And now we need to find the blueprint that we're going to work with. And in order to do that, you're probably going to need to come down to the view options and show engine content and show plugin content so that we can find this. And that's going to bring up a number of extra directories here. If you don't automatically see this directory, you can grab that by clicking on and off here on the left hand side. Now I need to find the imposter stuff and it's under imposter baker content. OK, now I'm going to come down into BP and I think it's the imposter uh, generate imposter sprites. So I'm going to drag that into the level and I'm pushing G to make sure that we can see this. I'm going to get rid of all of this and uh, I'm going to turn the sun around as well because I want to be able to I want to be able to see this as we're working with it. So there you go. Right. OK, so we have our mesh and we have now in the level the BP generate imposter sprites. OK, I'm going to take my imposter and I'm going to place it just above the level there, I think, so that we can get some shots around it. Um, and I am going to um, I'm going to make sure you have to really make sure that you've got the scale at um, 111. OK, because that's a requirement for the photos. OK, now under the source mesh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to first I'm going to click uh, on draw debug sphere. And you're going to see that this this allows us to see all of the different cameras that it's going to take the photos from. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find source static mesh actor. I'm going to grab the picker and select our rock. You can see all the cameras are going to move around this rock here. Now I'm going to quickly get rid of the debug sphere so you, but you can see it. But that's a good way to check you, you've got the rock, the rock um, specified. Now, before we can capture this out, there's one other thing we need to do. We're going to have to we're going to have to add a little bit more of data to the material on the rock in order to, to render it out. So if you grab the rock, you come down to the, the material, the M underscore rock. Let's open that up. That's going to give us something that looks like this. So this will be our, our rock. Now, we need to use something that's called an imposter capture switch. So if you type in imposture, you're going to see capture switches here. Now, we've got a little problem with this, that the output pin and the input pin are material attributes. And we already have the material attribute here split. 
So the way we're going to get around this is if you right hand click and search for make material attributes and if we plug that into the material attribute output here and by holding control I'm going to drag the base color across to each of these and the ambient occlusion and the and the um, normal map and that's going to allow us to get to, to an, a standard output pin. Now to plug that in here we're going to need to select the output pin and click on the use material attributes in the bottom right hand corner. Now if you plug that in like that the material is still going to work this is just going to allow us to capture the data from it. So I'm going to save and apply this and if we now come back to our pack to the BP generate imposter sprites come down and click clear render target render frames it's going to take a little time create static asset hey presto we have a rock now all the different angles you can see that it looks very similar maybe not quite as detailed but if we were to come in here to the brush wireframe you can see that this is quite a complicated rock where this is next to nothing it's just a small little plane which is then using the material in order to, to bulk it out to make it look like that so we're going from that to that very very quickly which is awesome now um, you're going to find this there's one more thing that we need to do in this case we're going to need to generate this mesh output and that's slightly complicated to do you need to highlight the 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 BP generate imposter and come down to the procedural mesh inherited now if you look down here you're going to find a procedural mesh create static mesh and I'm going to create this and I'm going to call this proc mesh rock and I'm going to put it into the I'm going to put it into the well let's leave it in the meshes for the time being okay so if I come into the meshes now between uh, reference my text and matrix can't save don't worry about saving this be careful about saving stuff at this point because it may by the way that this works dynamically it may crash your engine so I recommend doing very little saving okay so we have a proc mesh rock here and you can see that is what the mesh actually looks like that is being used for this now we want this in order to make this display all the magic is done within the uh, material and there's no material applied here but you'll find if you look into imposter baker and imposter baker lots you'll see that there is an mi underscore imposter which is generated here which as soon as you apply it to it you're going to see you're going to be able to see the the rock okay now um next step is how we could actually use one of these because you can can actually grab one of these and you can use them in the level they do some funky stuff though um, if you if you just put them in plain so um, what I'm going to show you now is I'm just going to show you how you could use this as a um, as a, a lot for for the rock itself so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this material I don't think that should cause us any problems so I'm going to save I might rename this one to imposter rock but the mesh I'm going to take the so I think it was this one here I'm going to take this and I'm going to save this to my hard drive because I'm going to re-import it as one of the LOD levels for the static mesh. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to go to asset actions, export and I'm going to call this proc mesh LOD just so that I know how to find it. Save that to my desktop. Save. Come in here and just export. 
and I am going to um, I, I don't know if I need any of these but let's if you fire up I'm going to grab a new level so I'm clearing any of the problems that we have here go new level default and I'm not going to save and it's crashed anyway so just restarting Okay, so I have rebooted and now I'm just going to try and apply this as a LOD. So here we have the, if I turn on the wireframe, you can see that this will stay at the same level regardless of, of how far away we are. And now, now I'm going to come in and open up the static mesh for the rock. And I am going to come down to the LOD system. At the moment, we have a number of LODs equals one. And I'm going to change this to two and click Apply Changes. OK, now if I come under uh, Custom, um, I'm actually going to re select the LOD import and I'm going to re-import level one. OK. And now I'm going to go away to the desktop and I'm going to find the proc mesh LOD. And it's successfully imported there. So you can see now, as I get further away, it changes to this, this material. Now, this uh, LOD. Now, the reason why it's not connecting up correctly is because we don't have um, the we don't have the material selected for it. So I'm just going to find the specific material that we've made and here it is. Add that in as MI Imposter Rock and now under the LOD settings for I'm going to go custom under the LOD settings for uh, LOD 1 I'm going to do a drop down and use the material yes and here you go and now you can see that this lod is being used as we get further away from the rock you may want to change the settings because you might might feel better if that was further away but i'm going to save that come back in so now I can drag out as many of these as I want. And they all look pretty damn good. They'll even rotate and they can be moved around. But if you look at the um, the wireframe, like the majority of them are just, just specs until you get close and then all of it clicks back in. So, and if I was to look at level of detail correlations, it's not going to show it. But yeah, so you've only got that and then everything else is entirely black. So that's one of the cheapest ways to get to get the vertex scan. So th this, I think, is an absolutely fantastic tool. So I hope that has been clear enough. Thank you for watching.